Good afternoon, this is Mr. McGee, and I'm going to create a video on how to make a graph and a table on Microsoft Excel for the lab that we did Monday. I'm going to be attempting this again. I did put one on earlier that didn't have audio. We'll see how this works out here. But first, to make a graph, notice that we have two columns for our set of data. I do want to point out, as it says over here, that these uh, labels are not accurate. You are going to have to change these according to how you feel it appropriately labels it. Remember, with units and uncertainties. And I will get rid of this just so we can move on. Uh, when you look at a table, in this case, you have your x-axis or your independent variable here. You have your y-axis or your dependent variable here. That means we are all set to go and labeling a graph. So to do this, I'm going to click it, and I'm going to highlight my x-axis, or my independent variable. And I'm going to let go of the mouse there. I'm now going to hold Control down and highlight the y-axis, or my dependent variable. Whatever you do, don't do this, where people just highlight the entire thing. You don't do that because the computer doesn't know which one is the right axis. So again, click and highlight, and then you hold control, click and highlight. And in doing that, we now can go up here to insert, and we can now create a graph. Because this type of data is numerical, we are going to create a scatter plot or line graph with this. We do not do a bar graph. If these were specific names, such as uh, the names of the students in the class, or maybe uh, t-shirt colors like blue, white, yellow, black, orange. Those are categories, and we would be okay probably doing a bar graph. But for this, since where there's a trend, we're going to create a scatter plot just like this. Okay? And luckily for us, it turned out to put the data very nicely in a manner. So we just have to do a few things. On older editions of Windows, or I'm sorry, Microsoft Excel, the options to edit the graph are up here. And on this newer version, I am using Office 2013. It's over off to the side here. First thing I want to do is click on this and see how it gives us all our old elements like it used to. First thing, get rid of the grid lines. We don't like those. Second thing, let's go ahead and refine the axis a little bit here, okay? I notice that I have a maximum y-axis somewhere around 500. It's actually 505 according to my data. And I have a minimum, looks like not quite 200. So we're gonna click on that and right click, format axis. I could have done it over on that little plus button too, but let's go ahead here and put minus 200. And for our maximum, we could probably go to 550 instead. We don't need to go all the way up to 600. Major unit is how much it's going to count by in increments. I think we could probably do about 50. Your mileage may vary. Everybody's lab design is different, and it does depend on how big you make your picture when you paste it. So far, it looks good. Okay, let's go ahead and check out our Y X, or I'm sorry, our X axis here. Right click over it, format axis. And if you can see, it goes all the way up to 52. We probably don't need it to go all the way up to 50, or I'm sorry, 60 seconds. Let's go to 55 and let's, let's count by every five. Click on five there. And as you can see, we have now scaled our axes. And again, you can change yours. I don't want to limit you to how it has to be. You just need a tape, or I'm sorry, you need a graph that has appropriate increments with enough resolution in it to be detectable, okay? Next part is we want to add a chart title. Well, it's already included, so all you have to do is go there and add a chart title. We also want to include axes titles with uncertainties and labels as well. So click on this plus button, and you go to axes titles. You could just click on both. This is a feature that the other versions of Office did not have. You used to have to click on both of them one at a time and mess with the options. Now you can just click here and... It just puts the access titles there for you. Once your access titles are there, you can go ahead and put in your access title and your uncertainty. So I'm just going to put blah, blah, blah. And you can do plus slash minus uh, whatever your uncertainty is going to be, of course. That's something I'm going to leave up to you. And again, if you want to do the symbol instead, 
you could just go here to insert symbol and that's where you can get that fancy plus and minus. It's not necessary, but it is a nice feature to have. Same thing over here, add your, uh, add your Y axis with your units and uncertainties included. Okay, next thing we wanna do is we wanna look and see, do we need any error bars or anything? Well, in this lab, we did not do any more trials. Every data point for every variable is exactly one piece of data. There's not five trials. It would have been nice if we had it where we would have done this, uh, this control group not exposing the corn to microwave. It would have been nice if we did that five other times, but we did not. For that reason, we do not have any error bars. This is the exact data. There's no spread of data for the control. So there's no error bars needed. Next, we would like to get a nice tread line, and there's a couple ways you could do this. Okay, click here to go to tread lines. You could go to click on the tread line here, and I like to go to more options. Now, linear is one thing that's acceptable, but I like to see more, is there a trend? It does appear other than a couple anomalies, and like we said, this can probably be explained with experimental error. But other than that, and maybe this one here, it seems like there is a little trend going on. I like, in this case, to click on polynomial, and you select the order until you feel it fits the curve. And you can do this almost indefinitely there, but I don't think three fits very well. I don't feel like it's actually curving up, but somewhere around four and five, I feel it's representing the curve rather well. I'm gonna go with four. With that being said, you now have your graph completely made. I'm going to scale it to however size I want to. Depends on how big you want it. And then keep in mind, it will crunch these numbers. I like it right here. I am going to click over here and copy it. By the way, you can move your titles and all that around and you can also go to home and make them bigger fonts, different fonts, etc. Okay. Oh, uh, before I move on, these data points are probably just a little bigger than they should be for being acceptable. I would click on one just like this, right click over it, and let's format the data series. It's just going to change these data points up. We'll go here to fill and we're going to click the marker. We want to change these markers up. I'm going to go to marker options. I want them a little smaller, but here's where you can get different shapes, but I just want them to be smaller. Let's go here to pick a, I want a nice, whoops, that's not the line. I, whoops, I don't want a line around the circle. And then the last one here, this is the one I was looking at, fill. Let's fill it with a nice black color. And there we go. Data points look much more professional. Okay, back to what we were doing. Click on the graph. Uh, make sure you don't click in the middle of it because it's just the picture there. Click on the graph somewhere copy it and now let's go paste it in a word processor so here's my writing and I'm just gonna write a bunch of stuff here uh, I guess I'll just type a bunch of random letters in there just like this doesn't matter let's just say this is the body of your paper and now you're gonna post your graph or your table right click and then if you paste Notice you get all these options here. Use destination theme, you can keep source formatting, use destination theme. They're very different in all of them, but I personally like this one with the little mountain. Paste the picture. And you can do this however you want to, but I like it this way because notice I can resize my picture just like this. And when it prints, it usually shows up well, but just something to keep in mind. But I can resize my picture and it does not change at all. Okay, that's why I like that picture option. If you paste it another way and you try to resize it, it may crunch all those numbers for our values and stuff a little bit. So you can do it however you want, but just be aware that that could happen. Once you paste it, here's a cool trick. Click on it, go up here to format, and you can wrap text and click in front of text. You can move this picture now wherever you want to in front of the letters. You can move it to the side of a caption somewhere. It's pretty much yours to do what you want with. Another thing, go up here to insert 
and you can put a text box. Draw a text box is a good option. I can make my text box here and I can write caption stuff, blah, 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 whatever. And I'm going to go up here to shape fill. Don't want to fill it. And shape outline. I want to get rid of that black outline around my text box. I'm just going to get rid of the outline. So there I do. Or there I go. I have a caption. And notice I can put it wherever I want to, but I want it right there. And it's a little big, so I'm going to go ahead and shrink it a little. All I have to do now is click on the caption box, hold down control, click on the graph itself, and I can right click and group it. And now it's tied together as one unit. I can move this anywhere around and the caption will follow the graph. Just another way to do it. What I want you guys to do is do this as best as you can and make it look nice when you paste it. Please do not print these uh, landscape. You want these printed portrait just like this. Posting a table would be the exact same thing. You can click here, right click over to insert row, and you can put your title up here. This is my title. I'm not going to worry about formatting and all that. And you can spread it across these by just highlighting it and going to merge and center right there. So that's one way you could do it, or you could just do as I did in here and put a caption above it for your title. There's many ways you can do this. Let's say this is my table, and I want to copy it. Highlight everything. Right click. And just as before, I can do what I want. I can paste it in a number of manners, but I'm just going to paste it as a picture right now. And I'm going to go back here and put it in front of the text. I now am free to do whatever I want. And as you notice, it's pretty much however you want to arrange it. Hope this video helps. Remember, this is due Friday. Thank you very much.